Hey, what's good, everybody? Uh, I know it's dark. You really can't see me. Um, you know, there's really nothing I could do because I wanted to make this video. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's already dark outside. But, um, you know, I just wanted to talk about the last video I made. Um, you know, I talked about breaking generational curses and my grandpa. And, uh, you know, I never met my grandpa. He passed away before I was born. I think he passed away when my dad was really young as well. Um, but uh, actually, you know, I was able to get a picture of him. And, um, you know, like right now, you know, it's eclipse season and, uh, you know, the Dia de los Muertos and all that. So, you know, they say the veil is really thin. And so one of the things I think that was coming through for me a lot was my grandpa, right? I don't know if you could see this photo, but he's the only one not wearing a hat. Right, this is an old photo. Um, I don't even know, probably the 1950s or something. But he's the only one in there not wearing a hat. And funny enough, he's holding like a beer bottle, right? And so, you know, one of the things they said, like, you know, when they said he passed away, it was like some people try to say he drank himself to death. Other people try to say like, um, you know, other people try to say it was... Uh, that he was poisoned. But my grandma, you know, when I met her, you know, I was fairly, like, uh, young, too. When I met my grandma, she said that he had been poisoned, you know. So I'll take her word for it. You know, she didn't sound, like, confused about it. She said it with, like, authority. Like, she, you know, she knew what she was talking about, right? So anyways, um, you know, I just want to make sure my lights don't turn off. So anyways, um... You know, that's what, what I was talking about, like the generational curses and all. And I almost felt like like he was talking through me. Like, I don't feel like, like I, I'm I'm sure of it now, you know. I guess during this Dia de los Muertos, without really knowing, it's like if I was connecting with him. And even putting all that, like how I said, putting the past behind. Um, you know, that's been something throughout my life, like, you know. Again, I never try to be disrespectful, but for example, like I noticed that pattern, right? I would I would always end up like at first, like all the women I ended up with kind of tend to have a lot of issues, right? Like a lot of issues. Um and they always seem to get better, right? Like one girl I was with, like when I met her, she didn't have a job, she didn't have a car, you know, nothing really, like uh but, you know, she was cool, whatever. And then when she was with me, she got a job, she got a car, went back to school, all this stuff. So it was like, um, you know, but at the end of the day, they would drain me, right? Like suck the life out of me. And uh, then I have to rebuild, you know. And then so at one point in my life, I thought like, you know, like I, I've said it before, like my two biggest influences growing up was like Jesus and Tupac, right? Tupac, obviously, to survive in the environment and then Jesus just kind of got my attention. There was a lot of similarities, right? Like um like not like oh like I I thought I was Jesus or nothing, but what drew me to him was even that like uh when I was reading about him it talked about how you know Judas that had set up Jesus. And you know whether Jesus like whether Judas knew it or not, like he like he was like oh this is Jesus, right? Whether he was like, I didn't know they were going to kill him or I didn't know what they were going to do. You know, it was because of Judas that, you know, they took Jesus and then, you know, they killed him. So, like, what did you think was going to happen? Regardless, Judas. So, I was going through the same thing. When I happened to read the story of Jesus, I had, like, a friend, a really good friend, I thought, that had tried to, like, get me caught up in something. I don't know. I guess there must have been this girl that he liked and I guess... He thought she liked me, and he tried to tell someone that that I wanted to hook up with her or something like that. And her boyfriend was like this dude that was from some neighborhood. At the time, I think he was in jail, but he was known. You know, he had that street rep. He was known for whatever. So, you know, luckily, like, you know, I guess it backfired because that person told me, and I was like, what the hell, like, so, you know, they, they were counting on that that person would tell, because it was this person's cousin, right? Like, that they were going to tell the cousin, hey, homeboy's trying to 
hit up on your girl or something, which I wasn't like, I, I didn't even care. But, you know, all that aside, see, so whether he said it for whatever reason is like, what did you think was going to happen? Like if something would happen to me, regardless, it would have been bad. Right. Because let's say this guy tried to come at me. Either I I take his life or he takes mine or just something happens like. So regardless, it was like this guy was like a Judas, right? This guy had gone into my house, this guy, everything. And um, so that's how I related to Jesus, right? So so not all the like, oh, I, I was uh, turning water into wine or nothing like that, right? It was just that that uh, I had a lot of like that, right? So that's why I wouldn't judge people. And I always thought like, oh, maybe I was put into their life to help them, right? So like... Not that I'm, like, mad at the whole Jesus story. Like, it's fine. But it was almost that, right? Like, uh, you know, I guess in, in the street way, it was almost like, not that, you know, because I was young. So young is what? Innocent, right? So not like how they would have used the word, like, oh, Captain Save a Ho or something like that. But I wasn't trying to. It was just my good nature. Like, I wanted to help people, like, naturally. I, I didn't. And not to say they were hoes, nothing like that, obviously, right? Like, what I'm trying to say is. I had that good nature to my detriment, right? Like I would have stayed, I would have stayed as long as I had to stay, like while they sucked me to the ground, right? Not that they did it on purpose, but it was like whatever traumas they had, I was the one bearing the weight of it, right? And so, so, you know, maybe, you know, cause I never even probably said stuff. Like I never really said nothing to them. Like, hey, you really messed me up or, or something. I just would take it and keep moving on. And, but then the next person will be like that and the next person. So, you know, it took me all this time. You know, actually, the last person I kind of dealt with, you know, I won't even call it a relationship. It was just a situation, I guess. But the last person I dealt with, I guess they triggered all that, right? It was like the straw that broke the camel's back, basically. And so now it's like, I just kept noticing these patterns, right? And so my grandpa is like, it's like that, like how you really have ancestors looking after you, right? Like, like he came through now, like, I don't know. It almost felt like, a, it, it's not that it was a curse, but it almost felt like a curse. Like I had to stop this cycle. So maybe that's a better way. And these eclipses and all this stuff right now, how me finally put like a nail in that coffin, right? Like to never go through that again like don't go backwards again like i don't even think i would deal with that anymore right like like i don't want like whatever became my routine of dealing with damaged people you know maybe i felt damaged right so maybe i felt like more compassionate even though maybe i i did the self-work right and i healed myself so i was more compassionate because i always felt like okay i know what this person's going through so I had more compassion, right? But but at the same time, like I said, like it, it you know, it, it damn near like drove me to to the ground, right? Like just uh like that, you know, almost like a like something that's like uh what do they call it? Energy vampire kind of stuff, but over and over. And so, you know, I think uh, what was it like two years ago or something, when I had the the dream of the purge and then I went through all this anxiety and but it was all triggered by like this person, right? Where it was like, I've never dealt with anyone that I felt was more manipulative than this person because at least everybody else, I kind of, it was obvious, right? Like you would see it, right? Like, like it was more obvious, you know, all that stuff. But f to feel like you're being manipulated is just, it's, uh, it's different because he, my human part didn't even catch on to it, I guess. That's the funny thing. My human part was pretty gullible. But it was in the spirit world. I kept everything, like, I think for every lie this person told me, the spirit world would show me the truth, right? So that's why then I got conflicted and then I got anxiety because it was my higher self fighting with my human self. And the higher self always wins, so it's like, like, my higher self was telling me, man, it was probably the energy from my ancestors telling me, like, don't be stupid. Like, like we're showing you what this person is. You know what I'm saying? Like, they kept showing me over and over. Like, I never had a good dream about this person. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
but my but you know on paper like in the human self it looked like like uh you know it seemed right and this and that but spiritually it's like the spirit world was looking after me right so you know relationships you know relationships are i was actually supposed to do this interview and it didn't work out like yesterday or today and we we're going to talk about you know a lot of things right but um and I lost my train of thought. We we're going to talk about certain things, right? But um, relationships, right? I, I, I wanted to bring that up. You know, someone, you know, obviously a spiritual, you know, video and all that. But, um, you know, relationships are very important, right? Spiritually, right? They're very important. It's like, I mean, what could be more important, right? Everything, the way you deal with family, the way you deal with everything. And so... That's why I say this, cause um, I don't know, but for whatever reason, right? It was crazy. Even I happened to listen, like, wow, this was crazy, right? I went to the mountains and I was I was doing a mountain bike ride, and on this mountain road, there's a freaking broken mirror, like a big, like those stand up mirrors, right? And uh, so this mirror's right there, and I'm like, what the hell? And it's broken, right? The mirror's all cracked. It's complete though; it's together, but it's all cracked. The whole thing. And instantly, like, that's what was put in my head. Like, that's what I heard. It was like the illusion has shattered, right? Like, the, all the like all the fakeness, all the lies have been destroyed, right? Like, whatever thing that was in the darkness kind of thing, the hiding thing, like, the, the illusion has shattered, right? It's almost like when you think, and there's no disrespect again, but, like, you know, it's funny. It's like, um... I always thought like that was funny, right? Because in the book of Enoch, if you guys have read the book of Enoch, it talks about that angel that taught women to do the makeup and all this thing. And, um, you know, I know disrespect intended. So I'm, I'm just making sure I say it clearly. But when you think about it, it's an illusion, right? It's like, I mean, there's some people that use very light makeup, but there's some people that go to the extreme where, you know, like, it's a whole different person, right? It's crazy. It's insane. It's like, you know, you could, that's why, you know, they always make jokes in movies, you know, and I'm pretty sure it's happened to just about everybody, but you could be with someone and, you know, somehow all that makeup, they look a certain way, you know, and then <laughs> you see them without the makeup and then like, whoa, where's the person, you know, that, I, so it's crazy. It's like, like there's this illusion, right? I don't know why that came into my head. For some reason, I, I had to say that. But but um, let me know if you guys see my grandpa or anything. Because I, I don't know. I feel something, too, like if something's with me. so And not nothing negative, right? So all of a sudden, if you see something, like, don't get scared. See, and then I heard something moving. So anyways, um, what do you call it? Um, So, you know, and I'm thankful to anybody that's here in this land that I'm at, right? Like, uh, I'm in the mountains. So, so just thank all the spirits and, and ancestors that are here with me, right? So anyways, um so yeah, so I felt like something was showing me that that uh some kind of illusion was uh was being you know put down. And so anyways, um I feel like that, right? I've been being protected and it, it it's almost like a curse. Oh yeah yeah so anyways about the mirror. This was the funny thing. That was what popped in my head. Then after the next day I heard um, I think the person I was going to do the interview with, you know, they have spiritual videos as well. And they happen to say something about like a mirror being shattered. And usually people would think how the mirror being broken is like seven years bad luck. But in this case, they were getting it like the mirror broken with like a curse being broken. And so I was like, oh, wow. Like, because that kind of resonated more like me when I saw the mirror in the mountains. You know what I mean? It was just so random. I was like, what? Like, you know, it was just crazy. Um, yeah, so I don't want to babble, but I just wanted to say that during, you know, how they say the veil stand and all that during Dia de los Muertos. I feel like I tapped in with my grandpa. And, like, they've been protecting me and they've been guiding me to, like, finally break this cycle of, um, you know, being, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying. Maybe at one point I, it was meant to be that way, right, to try to, be a guiding light to certain people and 
you know, help them and, and be compassionate. But then now, like, I, I, it's almost like I did my work, you know, like I did my, um, you know, I put in my time as far as trying to help. And, and so, you know, as far as like that, like for me in the future, like any kind of relationships, like with women, I don't want to deal with that no more. Right. I'm over that. I'm over I'm not trying to play your daddy, you know what I mean? Unless it's in that some kind of kinky way or something like that. But you know what I mean? Like um something like that. But I don't know why I said that that either. But it's like um what do you call it? Yeah, I'm not trying to like like it's fine. Like, right, if you're with someone, obviously when they're going through a hard day or anything, then you're gonna be there to console them. That's natural, right? But that whole part of like, oh, let me just like you like you're completely like you haven't done any inner work, any any search like you know f- for self worth, anything like that. Like I'm not trying to start over or, or whatever addictions and you know I made videos about when I was with people that had like certain things and and just there was like entities attached to that stuff and I ain't trying to get no more like how they say sexually transmitted demons or or nothing like that. Like I'm 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 not interested in coming into union with people that that haven't figured it out or that are going to hinder me from, you know, that's what it feels like. Like I'm not being hindered right now because I'm not attaching myself to anyone that that can hinder me, right? Like I'm, I'm tired of that. I'm not, the last thing I, I'm, like I'm not accepting that at all. Let me make sure I'm fine. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to be, um, Hopefully, I'm just gonna leave the car. On. I don't want the car to die or something. What do you call it? Um, yeah, like I, I think that's part of what it was. You know, my and my um, my grandpa came through, and uh, I think that like like they're fighting for me. It's almost like you know they wanted me to do it on my own, but like they had to force it because I wasn't learning the lesson. Right, I kept repeating the pattern. But somehow in the spirit world, it was acknowledged like I was having a good heart, right? They weren't going to let, that's why even, you know, the divine intervention, like with, you know, certain people and stuff that I was with before, right? Like, man, it's just crazy, right? There's always been somebody trying to guide me in the right way, but you know, that's how it is. We fall for the right, wrong people sometimes, right? I don't know why I was going to say right, like, um... Who knows, maybe because it was meant to be, because that's how you learn your lessons, right? But also the wrong people, right? We fall for the wrong people sometimes. Or maybe that, maybe I said it right because they could have been, but it's all free will. They have a choice, right? So people choose what they choose. And then that's the thing, and sometimes there's no going back. Like, I remember once I got, you know, there was a job that was a 12-point a system, right? So once you ran out of points, you were done. You were going to be fired. And so one day I was late from lunch and I was coming in from lunch and I, you know, you had a clock in and, you know, then they pulled me into the office. They're like, Hey, uh, you know, I, we saw you came in late from lunch and you know, the guy was being all compassionate. So I thought he was giving me another chance. The next thing you know, he's like, I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, sorry. And thank you. And then and then he's like, no, that's it. And I was like, what? Like, oh, shoot. Like, yeah, that's it. And like, no more chances. Like, you're done. So that's how it is sometimes, you know. And I think people forget relationships are like work, right? Like, you have to work at it. And sometimes, like, once you cross that line and, and like, you know, I guess with humans, right, obviously we could be flexible. But sometimes, like, that's it. Like, you really do overdo it. And so me, like, it was a 12-point system. I passed the 12 points. I got fired. That's it. There's no, like, and then I can't just go. They're not going to hire me again, right? I mean, maybe years later, you could go back to a job, and maybe there's new management. They won't remember you. But for the most part, like, you, that's it. You're done. So that's how relationships are sometimes. The people, you know, like, one person I was with, I remember, like, she got along good with my mom and everything. But my mom, I guess, being a woman, she caught that she was like, oh, in Spanish, she was like, es caprichosa. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, she just, wa- she just wants what she wants. Like, she, she's not taking no for an answer. Like, 
So a capricho, I guess, is kind of like, uh, I don't know, in a way, it's like a selfish thing, right? It's like you want, and that, like this, she had no problem begging or, or that kind of stuff, like, oh, please, I'm sorry, the waterworks, all that stuff, right? To get what she wanted, but that's it. Like she would, she would not respect the, the you know, the agreements we would come, like we would agree to, and then once she would cross that line and we would split up, then she'd come back crying. And then my mom was like, yeah, it's caprichosa. And my mom liked her, but, you know, she knew. She would, she knew the game. She was like, yeah, she's just like, you know, basically that. Like, she's going to keep coming back because she, she wants, like, she, you know, it's like someone that wants to have their cake and eat it too, right? And so, so it was something like that, right? I, I don't know how to translate. I got to look at w- what the word is in English, right? But, um. All that, I guess this is all about relationships, right? Since I was going to do that um, that interview and it didn't go through, I figured might as well talk about it. But I just thought it's crazy. You know, my grandpa, I feel like he's watching over me. Like I said, I never got to meet him. But this Dia de los Muertos, I don't know why now, I guess, because the change is happening, right? Um, you know, it's interesting. I'll say this last thing. You know, I've been learning about my birth chart little by little, right? The good thing about it is that I learned after already, you know, being older and everything, like so many, it's pretty much dead on, right? Like each thing from the birth chart. So, you know, I knew that in, you know, because the score, these eclipses have impacted me pretty, pretty much. I already know I have the Taurus. So Taurus, anything Taurus, I always feel because I have Taurus placements, right? But, um... But Scorpio, right? I, I, when one of the interviews, they asked me about Scorpio. And I knew in Vedic astrology, my moon is in Scorpio. But I didn't realize, like, I have something else in Scorpio in the regular astrology. And uh, so I looked it up, and I was blown away because, I mean, it just made sense with everything. Like, Scorpio, like, um, you know, over these last years has impacted me a lot. And, uh, but especially in the place that this Scorpio placement is, it all made sense. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? So it was like an aha moment. So it's kind of like, I'm meant to, I go through all these things, but I adapt. And I think one of the reasons is so I could teach people, like, you know, there's people that, like, I remember hearing this, I think, Mexican comedian. Or no, 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 it's this guy. I think it was that Carlos Mencia that after, like, all these people wanted to beat him up and stuff. But he did say some good jokes. You know, whether he stole them, because that's the thing. They say he, st- he would steal jokes. So he would say some funny things. But I remember he said how, I think it was him. But he was like, how Mexican, he's, oh, Mexican, we get fired all the time. And he wasn't even Mexican. So that's why this dude, I guess, whatever. But he was like, oh, Mexican, we get fired all the time. It's like. But other people, you know, I think he said, like, how white people, like, oh, they get fired, then they'll go postal, shoot up everybody in the post office. Like, you know, oh, sorry, you've been terminated, and then they go nuts and kill everybody. But, like, we, how we're used to it. And that's the funny thing. Like, even me, like, I've been fired and everything, and, and uh, yeah, you feel down, and then you get another job, you're like, whatever. So all these things that have happened, like, I learned to adapt, and somehow it's crazy that. This placement in Scorpio kind of has that, like, where nothing in your life is certain, which has been my life, right? So many things have happened where I was like, what the hell? Like, why the hell did this happen to me? But it made me have to adapt. And it almost seemed like, at the time, it's like, there were hints that it was meant to happen, that somehow this is how it was going to happen, right? Through all my whole life. And I would understand that or understand that. I think is better. Understand that. But it still affects you, right? Like you still go through those moments. Like you still go through all the process of of feeling like, you know, kind of losing it for a little bit. But then like you get it, right? You get it. And so like understanding or understanding that the displacement, I guess, was meant to be like that. Like, you know, a lot of chaos, but then learning to adapt. And so maybe that, you know, because I guess I could show 
people too. Like, you know, like that's why, why, like I said, with relations, that's why I've been able to help and nurture and this and that because I know what it's like to like, like that, the Phoenix, you know, and it, it, they mentioned that when I was researching about that, it was like the Phoenix rising, which in, you know, in 2019, I, I, that was the first time I dreamed of like, I guess the Phoenix rising, right? So I guess it was trying to show me that I had been, I had reached that level spiritually, right? After all these death and rebirths, like I had reached that. Not to say, you know, I'm still obviously evolving. Like even just that now, like finally being over the past, like closing that door, right? Like I don't want to deal with like nothing like that, right? That door is not open anymore, right? Like I'm not trying to to relive my past with, with people that didn't appreciate, you know, that people didn't appreciate you when they had every opportunity when it was like the door was wide open, you know, like that door has to close at some point. Just like that, like I said, with the job, right? Like the 12 points, like I ran out of my 12 points and that, that door got closed. So, so that's me closing the door now on certain things from my past that no longer have any place, you know, cause there's people from my past, like there's people that. So obviously, if I'm talking, like, if there's people from my past that I talk to, then obviously, I'm not, this doesn't apply to them, right? Because we're cool. It's a different, it, it transitioned to something else, right? Like, there's some people that I have a friendship with and stuff like that. And that's a whole different story. But people that, certain people from my past, like, like, I'm not trying to, to relive that. And that door has closed. You know what I mean? So, um... You know, I think that's that's uh, what my grandpa was trying to show me during this Dia de los Muertos. You know, it's funny because I watched the movie Coco. Then I watched the movie Soul, those cartoons. And like even that, like there's all this stuff, you know, the ancestors and this and that. Well, more so in Coco. Right. But it was like that. Like I felt like I don't know. I felt like I. it was like living that that movie for a little bit. Right. During these last um during these last couple of days and you know I'm doing this before this Taurus uh eclipse so that's gonna be um I don't know but everything feels it feels different now you know it feels not necessarily better it's there I don't know it's it's just different now I feel relieved I feel relieved that's a good word like I feel like like I don't gotta deal with the BS no more I never had to, but maybe I felt like it. Like I said, it was my job to try to help people, and uh, maybe you know I, I could still do it from a distance, like on here. You know, I obviously I have no control over who watches these videos once I post them and make them public. But um, as far as that kind that kind of thing, like I'm I'm happy that if it was like a generational curse, you know, like my grandpa, I guess you know that like his thing you know i don't know i kind of because regardless whether let's say for you know just to play whatever like um whether it was the alcohol that killed them or a woman it's more like bad decision it was a bad decision of drinking or a bad decision of, of messing with the wrong woman right so in my case like i know alcohol was a huge bad thing for me for a while because even financially, right, when I got, like, DUIs and stuff, it cost me a lot. Like, it probably hindered me from making music where I could have invested in the music. So, and it could have taken me to my death, you know what I mean? Like I said, like, I, sometimes I black out. You know, sometimes I would black out and uh, not remember how I got home and all that crazy stuff, right? So, so um, you know, whether it would have been that or, or, or messing with the wrong woman, like, like that's really been driven to me, like the my my, wh whether God or the the angels or ancestors, whoever's been protecting me from messing with the wrong women, that's been a strong part of my life, right? Like they really don't want me messing with the wrong woman. Like that's been a very strong point, like in my life. So I feel like that book is closed. As long as I don't mess up, you know, I guess just trust the intuition. If I feel like I'm talking to somebody that's, you know, 
full of BS or has ulterior motives or or just isn't, you know, not right in the head or something. I guess I should know better now and know to go in the opposite direction, right? So uh, with that said, you know, hopefully you guys are good. Um, hopefully you get something out of this. I don't know. I felt like I was being kind of pushed to to make this video. You know, again, my intention never to insult anybody. It's just, um, I guess, my own evolution. And I feel really good in the direction that it's going. I just know this. I guess if you are someone that you don't have to, you know, I remember even once, like, I, you know, I started noticing people would listen. I, I was able to help people when they were going to do bad stuff. And I was like, nah, you don't need to do that or this and that. I remember even some a, a, a girl once that was going to, I don't know what happened with some guy, but she wanted to get revenge and blah, blah. And I was like, well, for what? Like, And then after when I seen her, I was like, oh, so did you do all that stuff you were going to do? And she was like, no, because no, you told me not to. And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, okay, good. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, someone listened, right? So I was like, but it probably helped her a lot. You know what I mean? Not going down that road, karmically, everything. Like, not, not playing no games. Just, like, let it go. And I guess she just needed to hear someone to tell her that. Like, just let it go. You know what I mean? Uh, so... Just that, like, you don't have to be getting revenge on people. You don't have to nothing. Like, I don't, and I think, you know, there's sometimes, you know, you go through stuff, right? You feel stupid. You feel that. But obviously, that's the, e that's the ego, right? Like, nobody likes to feel stupid. Nobody likes to feel like they were, you know, they were mistreated. They, they were manipulated. No one likes to feel that. But it's fine. Let the universe deal with it. It will. Trust me. It'll deal with it. Not that you wish that on anybody. You shouldn't. I don't. But I just know, like, you know what I mean? I just know, like, it'll set it right one way or another. And you don't have to. It'll set it right more so. And for you, like, I've even learned, like, I'll say that. So, so anybody just that, that maybe from my past that's stalking or something, like, I say that. I'd rather have, just throw me some good karma. I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't need nothing negative for them. That's kind of more the way I live. It's like, cool, man. Just throw me, you know, throw me a bone or something. You know what I mean? And I, usually I don't ask for it. I think it just happens and I recognize it. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, okay, cool. I'm glad I never wished this person bad or glad none of that stuff, right? So, okay, there. I've talked enough. I'm going to go now. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a well, great day or night whenever you see this. And, uh, you know, make sure you take some time for yourselves, you know during like eclipses and stuff like that it would no matter when you watch this video all right peace Presta una sonrisa, quiero verte estar alegre, más bella que el sol Y nunca más dejes que nadie te dañe el corazón Eres el brillo de una estrella, milagro de Dios Y si pudiera yo te compraría una mansión Y te dedico esta canción, más paz y amor Tranquilidad, ahora ven y cuéntame tu dolor ¿Por qué tan triste que te hicieron? El mundo de hoy en veces puede ser cruel Malo y tener peligro, pero tú te ve en Dios Ven, párate fuerte, alza la voz hasta el cielo Y no dejes que te quede Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, yo te ruego, escúchame. Dios te gala alas, pajarito, extiende tus alas, no dejes que el mundo te eche atrás, no, no dejes de que si tú quieres tú puedes hacerlo.
estas historias que yo cuento Tal vez sean verdad, tal vez completas Solo un poco o dos más la mitad Pero para mí en realidad El mensaje es lo que cuenta Alcanzar aunque una sola persona Que se siente que no quiere vivir Y su vida no importa Pero Dios no hace errores Y eso toma en nota Gastándote en las drogas No es solución Solo pospone los problemas Y los hace peor Pero para juzgar no estoy Ni decirte lo que hagas Solo estoy para enseñarte Que en el fin hay esperanza El tiempo todo sana Si hasta el dolor A veces tarda más que otras Pero te lo prometo